In the past, I've introduced you to puzzle generators like Puzzle Book Mastery, Kids Puzzle Book Mastery, and even Maze Crazy, all of which I still recommend and I actually use myself. But today, I'm gonna do a puzzle maker tutorial showing you two puzzle making software packages that I've recently found. So without further ado, let's jump right in. In a previous video, I actually showed you how I created a puzzle book for authors, and I did a spiral bound with Lulu, and I'll include a link to it above. But if you wanna see the behind the scenes on how I actually created those pages, this is the software that I used for the majority of it, with the exceptions of the ones that I did myself and the Sudoku ones that I did, all the word-based ones I did using Puzzle Book Generator. And these are the different systems that they have within Puzzle Book Generator. Now we're gonna start right now with Instant Puzzle Generator. But if you wanna learn about Instant Maze Generator, you're gonna definitely wanna stick around to the end. So we're gonna go into Instant Puzzle Generator. And right now, Instant Puzzle Generator does word searches. Now you can, when you purchase it, you can purchase upgrades where you actually, they'll give you word lists and all that other stuff. But I wanna show you how to actually use the generator and show you exactly how easy it is. Um, I am gonna give you some pros and cons to it. Um, this isn't gonna be 100% full tutorial because they have a ton of videos that show you all the little nuances. But I did wanna show you some of the great features that they have in this system. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a puzzle. Now, as you can see, I already have one created, Word Search 1. I'm just gonna create one here. It says Word Search 2 and just click Create. Now, one of the downsides yet could be a positive is once you're done with a session, all the puzzles that you create are cleared from their servers. So they don't keep anything on their servers long-term. And so the good news is, is that means that all of your content is solely yours. You don't have to worry about there being any kind of data breaches or anything like that. And that's why they do it, for security purposes. The downside is, is you wanna make sure that when you're done creating these word searches and other word-based puzzles, that you definitely wanna make sure that you download them onto your computer or a portable hard drive or somewhere else, so that way you actually have access to it. That way you don't forget to do it and then come back and it's completely gone. So I'm gonna to go to the word search and I'm just gonna upload my words. And they take a CSV or a .txt file and right here, word search. Double click on it. And as you can see, that easily, we have our word searches in here. And unlike other software, as you can see, there are headers and some description text, depending on how you wanna do it. But let's say that you uploaded it and you found a typo, or maybe you wanna add another word, or maybe you just don't like the way it looks. That's where this software really shines and really blew me away. So the first thing I can do is I can edit. I can just click in here and edit. If I find a typo, you know, I don't have to bother updating the text file, uploading it again. I don't have to deal with any of that. I can do it right here within the system. But the big thing for me is I can actually set up a title and a description for my different puzzles. This is the overall edit where I can edit the file itself as a whole. If I wanna add different um, descriptions, like right now it says find the words, that's for the first one, which is genre. There's a space between each puzzle. That's just what denotes the new puzzle. So this one is poets. So I can go in here and I can type in D-E-S-C colon, and I can just say, um, find the poets. Okay. And then I just simply save changes. And there it is, that simple, it's right there. Now, again, this isn't gonna be a full tutorial, but I do wanna show you some of the awesome features. So as you can see right here, this is, a list of, you know, this is the word search. This is a list of the words. You know, they, they do their best to fit it into that area. If you don't like the way it looks, you can just click right here and regenerate the puzzle. Like they'll recreate it right there on the fly. And this is really helpful when you're doing children's word searches when they're, it's gonna be smaller and you won't have as many words and therefore some words just won't fit. And so you might have some puzzles that have like six words and others only have four. So you keep regenerating until they get more in balance. So amazing feature. These right here are settings that are specific to this one puzzle. So I can go into settings 
and again, this is where everything shines, you can change the font sizes, okay? There are other software that I've used before and that I currently still use. You can't change any of the font sizes unless you get the, you know, the, the biggest package and all that other stuff. I can change the font size of the title, the description, the actual font size of the letters in the puzzle. I can change the grid size. So if I want it to be, you know, 16 or do I want it to be, so I want it to be eight by eight. Do I want it to be 15 by 15, depending on the complexity that I want it to be. I can go in here and how do I want to sort the, the clues? Do I want them in alphabetical order? How do I want the puzzle clues to show up? And right now it's in two columns, as you can see, but I can um, have them show up just at the bottom. I can have them show up to the right, four columns, three columns, however I want to set it up. And the best part is, I'm gonna show you right now, I'm gonna make this three columns. And again, this is just for this one puzzle. This puzzle, as you can see, is still in two columns. On the right-hand side, these are the settings, and it says when you hover over it, global settings. This is for everything. This will affect every single puzzle. So I can change the font type. Again, something that you can't do in other software. I can completely change the font type. I can, again, the font size for the title, description, and the puzzle. Again, I can adjust the grid size. This will be global. Like I said, this is global settings. So it won't just affect one puzzle, it'll affect all of them. Same thing about the arrangement of the clues. The borders, I can make, uh, I can change the borders. I can give boxes around the individual letters. So like maybe you want it to be where for a kid and you want them to color it in. You can do that with the individual grid lines in, internally within the puzzles. How do you want the solutions to show up? You can change the colors, the puzzle title color, the description color, the colors of the letters, the colors of the border around the puzzles, the solution letters, all of this you can change within settings. It's, it's honestly amazing. Blew my mind when I first saw this. I can click right here and this will show me my solutions. So if I scroll down, this is puzzle one, and this is now the solution to puzzle one. I can even change how the solutions are shown. So again, if I go to global settings right here, um, do I want to show only the words? So, so it blanks out everything else. Do I want to circle it? Or it will circle each individual letter or you can do what's more common, which is show the bounding box, which is basically circling the actual word. So again, all this flexibility we have within just this one element, so much variety we have when it comes to this. So I'm gonna turn off the solutions. And what that does is that's just for testing purposes, just for you. Okay, so let's say we wanted to download it. So if I click on download the puzzle, here's another area where we have options. I can do PNG, JPEG, a PPTX file. That's a PowerPoint file that you can actually go in and change or PDF. Let's just say PDF. Again, more options. I can select the page size, the page trim size. That is crazy. So many software packages out there, you're limited to eight by 10 or eight and a half by 11 or whatever. I can actually go in here and make this a six by nine if I want to. Okay. The page numbering format, that's right, you can put page numbers, or you can decide no numbering at all. But you can do page one, just a one, page one of 24, or just one of 24. All those options. Then, on top of that, you can actually decide whether you want to align the page numbers centered, or as the default, it's gonna be on the outside edge. So let me just say I'm gonna do uh, just the number, and I don't want it centered, I want it on the outside edge. I can actually determine how many puzzles are gonna be on each solution page. So I'm no longer wasting pages by having one solution on each page. I can, it defaults to four, but I can decrease that to one or two if I want as well. But four is the ideal number for me when it comes to solutions. And I can even decide what page number to start with. Let's just say my word searches may not be the first puzzle in the book. Maybe I'm starting with crosswords. That's right, you can do crossword puzzles. I'll show you that in a second. So I can actually decide what the starting page number is gonna be. And then I download it. 
So there you go. That's how to do it with word searches. But you may be asking yourself, what other options do I have? That's right, you can do way more than word searches. So I'm gonna go back to Puzzle Generator. Again, making sure that you download whatever word searches you wanna use so that way you don't lose them later on. That's super important and I really can't stress that enough. I personally usually download both a PDF as well as a PPTX file so I can go back in PowerPoint later and make any changes I want to if something comes up. Okay, so that was Instant Puzzle Generator. Word Puzzles Generator actually has a lot more options. So in the default, when you buy the, the lowest package, you get crosswords and cryptograms. That's right, crosswords. Not a lot of software out there that I found offers crossword puzzles. So let's jump right into that. So we're gonna create a crossword. We're just gonna call this crossword one. Again, same issue as before. Uh, it's going to clear the session when you're done with it. So make sure you download when you're done using it. So we're gonna view, uh, I'm gonna upload a file. Now let's say, you know, you watched the training and you forgot what a file looks like for this particular type of, uh, of crossword puzzle. So you forgot that how to actually set it up. You can actually download a sample crossword input file right here. You download it, it'll go into your default download folder and you can take a look and say, oh, that's right, that's what it's supposed to look like. But I already have one. Again, this is the one from my uh, puzzle book for authors that came from the spiral bound book that I did for Lulu. And here we go, here's our crosswords. Again, completely just like we're used to having crosswords right here. Here's our clues across, down, just like we had with instant puzzle generator. We have the options for our settings and we're just gonna go in here. Again, can change the same things as before. We can change the font, whether we wanna show the answers or not show the answers. Maybe we don't wanna show clues. You know, there's some puzzles out there where some crosswords where they do it with no clues. And so that, again, makes it even harder. So that can really adjust your complexity. So obviously I do wanna show clues, so we'll put that there. I can change the borders, whether I want it to be squares or circles. See how that changes. Change again, the colors. And this particular one is actually on this one puzzle. So this is puzzle type. This is the local, as it calls it, local puzzle settings. The global settings are right here. Again, I can change and make sure that um, everything is how I want it to look globally. And then if there's a couple that I just want to tweak, I can do that as well. Just like before, I can go to the top and I can edit the entire file. So again, if I want to add in a description, I can do that here. If I want to change it from puzzle one to something else, again, I can do that all right here. Again, your downloading options are exactly the same. You can decide what type you want to do. Uh, let's say PowerPoint this time, you can decide that or PNG or JPEG and then download. Now they have more than just crosswords. As I showed you before, we'll go to the word puzzle generator. They have the cryptograms. Cryptograms, you might be familiar with other software packages. Again, just create one. Again, if you don't remember what the file is supposed to look like, you just download a sample right here but I know what it looks like. I already have one because I used it in my puzzle book. And it's starting to plug away. It's adding them all in. I had a lot of quotes in this particular book. And as you can see, there it is. There's the letters. These are my global settings. Again, font type. It's all the same changes you can do. Right here, you can change, once again, the trim size. So if you're doing it all in the same book, you want them all to be six by nine, you can do that. Again, flexibility you just don't have other places. Um, really great. Uh, you can show a key table or not. The key table is the one at the top where correlate it with the correct letter that it's supposed to be. You know, how do you want it aligned? The, the author title, you want it line centered, which is what I typically do, but you can change it to left or right centered, depending on how you want it. Right down here is the author. So there we go. Those are our cryptograms. Okay, we're gonna go back. Now, if you purchased the, the additional package, you have things like double puzzles, scrambles, and missing vowels. 
Uh, you can also go and get uh, word lists and cover templates and all other good stuff. Uh, but I wanted to show you, let's look at the missing vowels. We're gonna go in, create a new one, one, uh, missing two, there we go. View, okay, we're gonna go in, we're gonna upload. Okay, as you can see, this one wasn't from my author book. Um, I didn't include missing vowels in that particular puzzle book. Um, this one happens to be about Halloween. So again, I can go in here and call puzzle, save changes. There we go. Again, I've got my individual puzzle settings I can do, local settings as they call it, or I can do my global settings. Again, changing the font, every, trim size, everything that we covered before. It's all the same uh, regardless of the puzzle type, um, just minor tweaks here and there, like the puzzle alignment and the clue alignment. And there we go. And that's the missing vowel. So as you can see, just it's missing vowels. I mean, it's as, as the name suggests. All right, we're gonna go back and back and we're gonna check out word scrambles. Uh, again, you've probably seen these on other software. I know Puzzlebook Mastery has it um, and uh, they work really well. We'll go to, we'll just call it scramble two, click in there, view, upload my file. As you can see that because it's all in one system, it's really easy to just click and click and, and get it all done. Um, again, you can tweak your page numbers. So if you wanna include a page number within your puzzle book, you can, and you just tweak the starting page number depending on how you wanna lay out your book. I usually don't put page numbers in mine because I actually like to uh, mix and match them from time to time. And so I don't like limitations as with having page numbers, but it's definitely an option that you now have. Again, as you can see, this is one that was not included in my author puzzle book, uh, just because I had so many different puzzle types to choose from. Um, so this one again is Halloween themed, um, but there it is. Uh, as you can see, the words all scrambled up. Uh, again, you can go in, you can edit the title, you can create a description, you can regenerate it if you want. Like if you don't like the way this puzzle look, you can regenerate it. We've got our local settings, which are normal. And then we have our global settings, which again are the same as what we're used to. Um, but there are some ones that are specific to this. For example, um, we can fix the first and last letters of the word. We have it on, it makes it easier because then they know that the beginning is starts with a P and the end starts with an N. Um, again, it says right here, that's only for words that are five letters or more. Um, so if I wanted to make it more complicated, I would deselect that and then it's all mixed up. And then we can go through, again, changing the fonts of the puzzle borders, the, the description, the color of the uh, font itself. So I can make this red and I can make the description uh, font color yellow, which is up here. So the title is red, description font is yellow, but I didn't put a description, so you can't tell that. Uh, the borders I can make, uh, let's make this color. See how they all changed. And then the puzzle color, we're gonna make green. So again, we literally can tweak each and every element in here. As far as the color is concerned, the font type, uh, there are a ton of fonts to choose from. So you're not limited. It shows you right here what it looks like. So you get a little hint as to what it looks like, both lowercase as well as capitalized. So again, letting you know before you apply it to everything, how it's gonna look. Again, adjust the trim size, everything else. All right, so that is our word scrambles. And then our last, but certainly not least for this particular word puzzle generator, is double puzzles. Before we go any further, if you're new around here, my name is Keith Wheeler, and if you wanna to continue to get all the hints, tips, and tricks on how to make self-publishing easier, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that little bell icon so you get alerted each and every time I put out a new video, just like this one. Now let's get back to the actions. So now we're gonna do double puzzles. Now, what a double puzzle is, as I set this up, two puzzles in one. I'm gonna upload the file. As you can see, what it is, is it gives you 
Again, our normal, our title, our description, if we have one, gives us words to unscramble, just like the word scramble. But the difference is, is now you'll see some highlighted areas and numbers underneath it, because that goes down here for the double puzzle. So it's the second puzzle. After they answer the first one, they'll get all of these letters in these numbered areas. They fill it in and it will give them the answer to the second one. So the second puzzle, the double puzzle. Again, editing features are the same as before. Again, going to our settings. Same typical settings that we have before. You can show clues or not show the clues. We can show the characters just so we can see how it fits and then deselect it. Again, you can change the alignment, the font size, font color, all the same elements that you can do before. And again, download it. And when you download it, you pick what type of file type you want, JPEG, PNG, PPATX, or PDF. Again, all very similar within one to the other. And I like that. I like the continuity that's within the systems. Um, so I, I don't feel like I'm, you know, have to relearn each puzzle type. Uh, everything's pretty much the same. And the only differences are what's relevant to that particular puzzle type. So that really makes things easier to, to remember and really makes things streamlined as far as creating these puzzles into puzzle books. So I'm gonna go back and there's one element that we didn't talk about and we'll go all the way back to puzzle generator and that is instant maze generator. And the reason why we haven't talked about that yet is because, well, it's not available yet. Um, I actually have access to it, but it's not available to the public. So stick around because if you're interested in seeing how to use instant maze generator, which the little spoiler, when it comes to the flexibility, it's gonna be very similar to the other systems that I showed you, but there are things that you can do with instant maze generator that literally blew my mind. So if you wanna see how to use Instant Maze Generator, let me know down in the comments. Also, while you're down there, let me know what you thought of these systems, Instant Puzzle Generator and Word Puzzle Generator. Do you think that they're better, worse, or about the same as other software that's out there? Now, just to be clear, I do not in any way, shape, or form plan on stop using like Puzzle Book Mastery and things like that because they definitely have features that I cannot do in this system as it currently is. For example, Sudoku puzzles. But this is absolutely one that I'm gonna be using from here on out as one of my mainstays. So again, while you're in the comments, let me know whether you wanna see Instant Maze Generator. If you do, I'll do a video on that. And also let me know how you think this one fits in your business. Do you think it's better than what you already have or is what you have already better? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to learn about other software packages as well. Now, how amazing was those two software packages I showed you? I mean, they were a lot easier and you have a lot more flexibility than other ones that I've seen in the past. Now, if you wanna get your hands on either one of those packages, you can just go to kwitherbooks.com slash PG for puzzle generators. Well, maybe you don't have the funds to actually purchase software right now. That's completely fine. Did you know that you can actually create a lot of puzzle book interiors yourself using something as simple as PowerPoint? Check out this series right here where I show you exactly all the different ways that you can use PowerPoint to create puzzle book pages for your puzzle books and you can start creating content right away. Now, if you've already seen that series, check out this video right here that YouTube says is perfect for you. I'll catch you in one of those videos and remember to write right.